Assalamualaikum and good morning. I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here with us at this live session from Masa University Saujana Putra Campus. I'm Umi Sarah Zukipli from Faculty of Health Science, Masa University, and I will be moderating today's session. Today's webinar title is Coronary Angiography, and it's organized by the Faculty of Health Science, Masa University. Dear viewer, before we proceed further, I would like to give you a brief overview of the program offered by Faculty of Health Science, Masa University. Let me share the screen. Faculty of Health Science have three departments, School of Physiotherapy, Department of Environmental Health, and Department of Medical Imaging. So School of Physiotherapy have Diploma in Physiotherapy, Bachelor of Physiotherapy, Bachelor of Physiotherapy ODL, Master of Physiotherapy. Department of Environmental Health, the courses that be offered is Diploma in Environmental Health, Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety, Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety ODL, and Diploma in Occupational Safety and Health. For Department of Medical Imaging, we have offered Diploma in Medical Imaging, Radiography, Bachelor of Medical Imaging, Bachelor of Medical Imaging, or DL. Why join Health Science? So this is the uh, factor that should be uh, low risk of job redundancy, cannot be automated, opportunity of work in variety of setting, a career you can feel good about, uh, lucrative recrimination, uh, no boring work routine, and high job demand, essential service. Master of Physiotherapy have two modes, one-year program full-time, two-year program part-time. And the requirement for master program, uh, for, uh, you must have bachelor degree with a minimum CGPA 2.5 in the related field. Or if your minimum then uh, less than 2.5, you need to have minimum of five-year working experience in related field. This is the uh, bachelor program. Uh, we have bachelor physiotherapy, environmental, and also medical imaging. The entry requirement of a bachelor program, you need to have matriculation, PNUST, or STPM, minimum two, uh, GPA 2.3 in two of following subjects. Uh, for A level, uh, minimum grade D in two of following subjects, biology, physics, chemistry. And for diploma, minimum CGP of 2.5 in rated field. If your CGPA less than 2.75, you need to have minimum of three year working experience. And for the diploma, uh, you are eligible for the credit transfer and it is subject to approval. For diploma program, we have diploma in physiotherapy, diploma in mental health, and diploma in medical imaging. The entry requirement for diploma program, you need to have SPM, pass in Basam Layu and English, and five credit in following subject, mathematics, one cent subject, and other three subject. Uh, GCE or O level, pass in Basam Layu or English, and five grade C in following subject, mathematics, uh, one cent subject, and any other three subject. Uh, certificate, certificate level 3 MQF in field of health science with minimum CGPA of 2.75. Uh, diploma in Occupational Safe and Health, uh, is, this one is a three-year program and the entry requirement you must have a SPM, O level and uh, or you have a certificate with 2.50 uh, uh, CGPA. Um, Masa Unifi uh, and Infinite Excellent is what Masa aspire to provide to each of its graduate. Uh, why should uh, choose a Faculty of Health Science Masa University? Uh, because we have uh, interactive teaching and emphasis on hands-on clinical skill, face-to-face uh, -face and online platform (LMS). Wide list of hospital, institution for clinical and industrial placement. Uh, Ignited by MQA and JPA with the international recognition, we have a dual award with ARU. 
we have cross teaching by expert. Masa has the most number of health discipline uh, in the single institution among IPTS. Various study mode, we have conventional, we have open and distant learning, and we have experience and dedicated international pool of academic staff. MASA also have a MASA scholarship. Uh, we have several uh, MASA scholarship. One of Haji Abdullah Academic Excellence Scholarship, Foundation Scholarship, Blue Ribbon Scholarship, School Teacher Scholarship, Family Scholarship, and the Single Parent Scholarship. MASA also have a collaboration and affiliation with all these um, uh, foundation. And we have also a student mobility program. Okay. And uh, we welcome you to join us. Thank you. Okay, before we proceed uh, to our webinar, let me give a... Uh, please contact us through MASA website or through our faculty Facebook page to know more about our program or simply leave a comment, we will get back to you. Your question concerning this webinar session can be listed in the chat box. Okay, before we proceed to our webinar, uh, let me introduce a bit uh, regarding the topic today, um, coronary angiography. So a uh, coronary angiography is known as a gold standard procedure for treating coronary artery disease. Arthrosclerosis is the hardening of blood vessel due to the blood formation in coronary arteries. So this condition leads to narrowing of the blood vessel and restrict of the blood supply to affected body part. Coronary angiography refers to imaging the coronary artery, the blood vessel, the supply blood to the heart tissue with the use of contrast media and the C-arm proscopic modality. This webinar will focus on the clinical indication, material and equipment, technique as well as the projection of the image produced during the procedure. Let welcome our speaker today, uh, Ms. Siti Aisha Munira. Hi, Ms. Uh, Munira. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Hi, Yerini. How are you? Uh, I'm fine too. Thank you. Okay, uh, before we proceed, let me introduce uh, our speaker. Uh, Ms. Siti uh, Aisha Munira was a Master of Health Science in Medical Imaging from International Islamic University Malaysia as well as the Bachelor of Radiography and Dynasty Imaging. Okay, uh, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, uh, you can share your screen. All right, thank you, Mr. Bumi, for a very brief introduction regarding the title of the webinar today. And again, I'd like to introduce myself. So I am Ms. Munira, one of the lecturers in the medical imaging department. So today for the webinar, I'm going to share with all of you today uh, one of the uh, procedures in medical imaging, which is uh, coronary endoscopy. Uh, but before that, before I forget, thank you to all of you who joined the webinar today. So without further ado, let me share the slide so we can have a look together on the coronary endoscopy. Right. Okay. So this is the table of content for my sharing today. So basically, I'm going to start with the overview of coronary endoscopy and then the clinical indication, contraindication, patient preparation, procedure, as well as and with the complication and safety in cardiac hospitalization. So what is coronary angiography? So basically, it is a procedure that called uh, as a cardiac catheterization. So catheterization means the insertion of catheter within the blood vessel. So this procedure, it is used on trash media, which is a substance that is injected into the blood vessel to, en to enhance the blood vessel in the medical images. And it also uses one of the imaging modality, which is proscopic modality, and to visualize the artery that supplies blood, uh, blood and also oxygen to the heart muscle. 
And during the coronary endography, a few images of the patient is taken to visualize the uh, blood vessel. So coronary endography is done to look for any stenosis. Stenosis means the degree of the accumulation of blood within the blood vessel. And also, it is to visualize the complete pressure occlusion of the blood vessel as well as the abnormalities of the heart muscle and also heart clot. Usually, coronary angiography is performed by a set of teams, consists of cardiologists, cardiologists, and also the rest. And this procedure is usually an emergency procedure. Sometimes it also scheduled for a screening procedure. And as mentioned, it is a gold standard for diagnosis of coronary heart disease. So these are the personnel that involved with the coronary endography. So um, uh, uh, some of them is the cardiologist, cardiovascular technologist, sharpness, runner sharpness, angiographer, and also radiographer. So next is clinical indication. So basically, clinical indication is the justified uh, reason for patients to go for coronary angiography. So one of uh, the most important clinical indication is the chest pain or angina. It is associated with the discomfort or shortness of, of the breath, jaw and neck, and also arm pain, intermittent and interesting chest pain, unstable angina. Uh, and also patients with the abnormal result on the stress test, ECT and heart for heart blood test. Patients with congenital heart disease, which is the uh, occurrence of the heart disease since the childhood, is also indicated for coronary endography. Okay, next is gastritis. Gastritis means the inflammation of the stomach. So if patient is having gastritis and other time is done, but the, uh, the source or the reason why uh, gastritis is present, present is still unknown. So patient is indicated to go for the coronary endography to detect whether there is present of the blood within the blood vessel or not. And then among other clinical indication is a heart valve problem. And there is also finding in the CPA coronary. Positive MRI are the first vision study as well as the uh, as a preparation for pre-operative assessment. So for contraindication, contraindication is just a uh, justification why patients cannot go for the coronary endography. First and foremost is the acute uh, or also chronic brain failure. So because of the coronary endography use contrast media. So this substance will uh, uh, increase the function of the kidney. So for patients who have who having the problem with the kidney, uh, the patient is having hard time to uh, to extract the uh, contrast media from the body. So that's why a uh, patient with the acute and chronic renal failure is contraindicated for the coronary endoscopy. Among other contraindication is the fever, probable, uh, probable infection. So, untreated active infection, severe anemia or uncontrolled uh, hypertension, blood unavailable, which is for the patient who have the red blood group, uh, pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema means the accumulation of the fluid within the uh, lungs, previous coagulopathy or abnormal calcium signs. So, patient with the, uh, who has the disease, uh, which is the blood. Uh, Take longer time to clock is also contraindicated because uh, this procedure is this procedure involved with the puncture of the blood vessel. So if the blood takes long time to uh, clot, so it can cause or uh, increase the risk for the disease. Next is severe respiratory condition and decompensate heart failure. So these are among contraindications for coronary endoscopy. So equipment and materials. So this is the image of the endographic tube or the chest blood. So basically, uh, for in coronary endography, it involves the sea arm spectroscopic modality. So here is the image of the sea arm modality. So the sea arm can be moved in the various uh, projection and various movement. It takes the image of the uh, heart. And also we have the carbon fiber cytoscop here for uh, patients to lay down. And pressure injector for injection of the contrast media. And this is the monitor for the visualization of the image and also the emergency story 
here for the uh, preparation this and this happened during the coronary endoscopy. And among other equipment and machinery that should be prepared by nurses before the procedure, this is the equipment on the study. So we have the Covidon uh, iodine solution here, glycerin tricyclic, xylosine, uh, heparin sodium, angiopeptide, catheter, guard wire, contrast media, and producers. Okay, so all these things must be prepared beforehand so that uh, the uh, examination will run smoothly. Okay, so these are the main among the medications and also contrast media used during the coronary endoscopy. So here we have the glycerin tricyclic for uh, to reduce the angina, the same with, and this is the heparin for anticoagulant. Glycerin is for the local anesthesia to numb the region of interest. And this is the on the right hand we have the contrast media. Okay, there are two types of the contrast media here. First is 300 for the normal patient, which is patient who has the 3 millimeter normal. And also for patient with the kidney problem, which has the 3 millimeter uh, heart. Okay, so we are going to use contrast media 320. Okay, uh, the next treatment is the introducer sheet. Okay, so this is uh, used for easy access and bloodless exchange of the blood while you can, etc. And it also serves as a protection of the vessel or also the drainage. And it also provides a threat during the manipulation and reduce uh, pain for the patient. So basically, this is the image. So here, this uh, uh, sheet will be inserted into the patient's blood vessel. So it provides a threat for the guide wire and the hypertension. So at the back here, we have the uh, open hole here. This is for the insertion of the guide wire and hypertension. So here will be insertion of the transition okay, Next is the guide wire. So guide wire is a wire that is inserted into the artery to guide the catheter to a certain location in the body. So as it means, so it provides a guidance for the catheter. And it functions to facilitate the exchange of the dynasty and guiding wire. Okay, and then there's a lot of sites. They have their fit for guide wire and also mobile guide wire, tap for wire, long tap for wire, and SLJ fit in guide. So, guide wire is also known as a thin guide because it's thin and tightly, it, it is thin and tightly called thin. So, it is made up of the standard thin. Okay, so on the right side here, we have the image of the guide wire. So, here we have the fit. And here we have the term and also the staff of the structure. The next important equipment is catheter. Okay, so after insertion of the catheter, uh, insertion of the guide wire, then, then comes the catheter. So catheter is made up of the range of the polymer. For example, we have the silicon rubber attack and also thermoplastic electrolyte. So, uh, catheter can be divided into two. We have the endographic catheter that deliver the contrast media, and also we have the guide catheter to guide other instruments into the blood vessel. Uh, for example, the instrument is for the sensing. Okay. So, uh, the guide wire, uh, the catheter is made up of the silicon because uh, the silicon is inert and unreactive to the body fluid and other range of the medical fluid for check some in contact. So with the silicon, it is uh, safe to uh, be inserted inside the blood vessel of the patient. So um, capital, we have a soft and radioactive. So this stick will be clearly visible on the image. Okay? For the uh, and uh, it will be safe uh, at the specific site for injection of the contrast media. Okay, and then for coronary endography. Uh, the type of catheter that will be used is Justin type catheter. So Justin means that it has a C-shaped curve here and a tapered uh, and fold tip here. Okay, so it has a curve and a tapered uh, and fold tip. So uh, there are two types of the Justin that will be used. First, we're going to use the Justin left coronary catheter. Okay. So the length uh, of the Justin left coronary catheter is depending on the primary curve and also the secondary curve. But usually the standard size that will be used is 4 cm. Okay, and then uh, the 
design of the uh, character is depending also is selected depending on the name and the width of the X and Y card. So you have a variety of size, for example, 3.5, 4.0, 5.0, and also 6.0. So these on the right side is the image of the left tracking character together with the image of this character inside the uh, eye star here. Next, the second part of the Justin type character is you have Justin's right coronary character. Okay, so for this uh, one is a little bit different from the Justin left. So this sign is determined by the second letter. So among the signs that we have is 3.5. 4.0 and also 5.0 yeah. But the same size used in the coronary endoscopy is 4 cm. Yeah. So the key here you advance into the ascending alpha of 40 FAO projection and the key is directed out the way. Yeah. It is meant for the right side. So aside from the character, uh, that wire and also introduce this. Inside the endography room or the chest lab, we also need to have the recycled situation equipment to use all the equipment needed in the emergency room. So these are among the equipment or the materials needed. And this is the image of the emergency room. Because coronary endography is a procedure that involves with the insertion of temperature uh, into the blood vessel. So there are possible risks that can, can happen during the uh, procedure. So it's better to prepare uh, for the uh, So in the coronary endoscopy, the technique used is the cell ginger technique. Okay, the insertion of the needle uh, inside the blood vessel used the cell ginger technique, or another name is the skin uh, wall needle technique. Okay? So basically, in the cell, uh, cell ginger technique, it provides a safe access to the central vein. Central vein is the blood vessel here. So the technique involved first is the placement of the needle into the lumen of the blood vessel. And then after the uh, needle is leaving the blood vessel, so the guide wire will be inserted to the needle. And then after the guide wire is leaving the lumen of the blood vessel, and the, uh, the needle will be removed. And then with the guidance of the gut wire, the pressure will be inserted into the lumen of the blood vessel and will be threaded into the uh, site of interest. Okay. And then after the pressure reaches the site of interest, the gut wire will be removed. Okay. And then uh, if the intradesal shield is used, so the technique will be a little bit different, which is it also starts with the placement of the needle inside the blood vessel. So after the needle is already within the lumen of the blood vessel, then a small or uh, a short sign of the guide wire is inserted within the needle. Okay. And then after the guide wire within the lumen of the blood vessel, the interviewer here with the blue uh, uh, deck here will be inserted within the lumen. So once the interviewer, the key of interviewer is already within the blood vessel, securely within the blood vessel, so the uh, short guide wire will be removed and the long guide wire will be inserted. So, with the guidance of long guide wire, the uh, catheter will be inserted and threaded onto the region of the okay. So, this is the cell ginger technique that we use for the coronary endoscopy. So, uh, to, uh, to insert the needle within the blood vessel, there are a few types of tests that can be done. But today I would like to share only two of them, which is first radio access and the second one is the primary access. So let's have a look for the radio access first. So radio access means the uh, insertion or the cell ginger technique is done at the radio access here. Okay. So and then after the uh that wire and protector is inserted, then the protector is threaded onto the side of interest at this part here. Okay. The so advantage of using radial artery is that uh, radial access is that uh, superficial artery. So easily palpate, you can uh, the cardiologist can easily palpate the uh, radial artery. Easy hemostasis means the uh, the uh, the physiology of the blood flowing can easily done. Means that after it's implant and then the procedure is done, so the process of blood flowing here occurs uh, very fast. 
early ambulation okay? and then because of EC blood clot here so patient um, does not require for long breath in that after the procedure dual situation so uh, here at the hand area uh, there are two situation that supply blood to the hand so first you have the radi artery and also the ulna artery so that is seen by the dual uh, situation however uh, there is a little bit advantage, disadvantage for the radio attack. First, it's small artery. So, because of the small artery here, so it easily causes the spasm and also poor radio targeting. And, uh, and it also causes the trauma and scaring to the arm here. Then, the second uh, type of attack is the femoral attack, which is the femoral artery is used here at the area of the joint. Okay. And then this uh, side, the catheter will be threaded until uh, to the side of interest at the heart to the abdominal allosophy. Okay. So for the summer abscess, the advantages is that it is a large artery. So because of large artery, uh, it can provide more material selection here. And uh, this advantage is uh, because of, uh, also because of the large artery, it can cause uh, hematoma, trigger and aneurysm. And the ischemia for a uh, secondary to the traumatic. And uh, patient also needs to lie flat for six hours before the procedure and uh, because of the light activity. So, in order to determine which uh, access needs to be used, so uh, patient needs to undergo the element test. Okay? So, basically, on the left side here, I have provided the images for the element test. Uh, so, uh, during the LM test, patient need to elevate their hand and make a fist for 20 seconds. So here, patient elevated the hand in the end uh, and make uh, a fist for 20 seconds. So here we have, and then after that, uh, the first pressure is applied against the both radial artery and also the ulnar artery here. So here, pressure is given. And then after that, uh, patient needs to open their hand here. And the hand should be in the blank what so because no blood uh, supply is uh, occurred to the hand. And then uh, the operator or the one who applied the pressure needs to release uh, the pressure at the ulna artery. Okay. And then uh, here, if this hand will have a blushing, which is the redness of the hand, use the blood return to the hand, means the alum cell is negative. So the radial artery having a so means that the hand is having a good blood flow so, and radial artery can be used as the uh, access part. Okay, but if uh, the blood that is listen to the hand within five to fifteen seconds means that the alum cell is positive. So means the uh, radial artery cannot be punctured and the only type of puncture that can be done is femoral artery. So. Uh, what patient needs to do or what patient needs to expect before the preparation. So, first of all, uh, there will be admission uh, as in patient in the day one. Okay? Then the patient will be identified with the uh, nurses in charge with her identification of the patient. And then also for patients who take a certain part of the medication, for example, anticoagulants, diabetes uh, medication and diuretics, uh, they need to stop the medication at least one day earlier. Okay, so that uh, anything uh, that uh, uh, that this medication has certain effect on the uh, blood on the blood, so it can prevent anything happen during the procedure. Okay, knee by mouth for uh, for six to eight hours before knee by mouth, the patient has to uh, fasting six and uh, eight hours before the procedure. I remove any jewelry and things to the hospital down. And the area of interest, for example, the area of uh, site that will be assessed, for example, the femoral artery, joint area, needs to be clean and shaped. So, and if, uh, for patients who have allergy or asthma history, uh, need to be uh, identified and administered or given the hydrocortisone, the maybe patient to prevent any uh, allergy reaction during the procedure. Because the procedure used from plus media, the patient with the allergy history will have certain allergy to plus media. 
the deep meditation will prevent any risk of the uh, uh, complication during the procedure. Blood test and ECG should be done if it is not done earlier. And uh, uh, because of the COVID still uh, happening, so patients who want to go for the coronary endoscopy need to do the RTK and PCR. And also before the procedure, uh, patients need to be explained in detail regarding the procedure, the complication, and also the benefits of the procedure. And then after the uh, explanation given, uh, patient needs to sign the consent form so that uh, patient is already understand regarding the procedure and willing to go for the procedure. And also, because this procedure involves with the INIV relation, uh, which is using the first of machine, so uh, for the child bearing age, means that a uh, woman who still can uh, uh, be pregnant, if they need to be asked regarding the LMC, last menstrual period, means that uh, this is to uh, avoid that uh, patient is uh, exposed to the uh, radiation dose or the fetus. Most importantly, is the fetus within the womb to be exposed into the radiation dose because the uh, radiation uh, can cause uh, radiation dose to the patient. And then uh, IV granula is in place in the left hand depending on which side or which hand that will be used or which side that will be used. Radio fast check for suitability and patient needs to be checked for the blood pressure, heart rate, and SPO2 for the patient. And then this is for before the procedure. During the procedure, the patient will be uh, asked to lie to find on the uh, tray table or on the table with the right hand secure and strap. Patient comfort and safety are entered. CCP left attached on the chest and left leg. So, and then a blood pressure cuff will be placed on the leg to check the pressure and the coordinator to check the uh, SPO2 will be placed on the finger. Arm and joint cleaning with the antithetic and patient strip. So, this is depending on which part of uh, uh, whether radio or tomorrow access will be used. And during the procedure also, cardiologist will calculate the access site to look for the day. And the local anesthesia will be given to the exercise to, uh, to reduce the pain uh, that will be experienced from the uh, 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 that will be experienced by the patient during the procedure. And uh, radio of memory RT will be catheterized uh, depending on the LMS uh, using the charging technique. And then RTA space will be introduced, and then to the catheter is guided over the gut wire and advanced into the bar power bar So basically. Uh, the site of interest where the tip of the ether will be put is the vasal uh, uh, bar okay? and this is used to the first of this modality. So the guide wire is removed and the catheter connected to the nanometer line, so this here is for the injection of the contact media. So left coronary artery is catheterized and the left coronary artery uh, are taken with the injection of the contact media. And then after the images of the left coronary artery is taken, then uh, there will be uh, the catheter will be uh, placed at the coronary uh, uh, right coronary artery, and the images of the right coronary coronary artery will be taken. So the amount of compressed media that will be used is amount uh, around eight to ten millimeter compressed media uh, for first injection. So after the images is taken for the um, then there will be the post procedure. So the catheter is removed. Then a uh, patient will still apply the main suspension due to the injection of the contrast media. And then the insertion site will be secure with the manual compression. And a uh, patient will be observed. Uh, the vital sign of the patient will be observed, and the uh, puncture site also will be observed. For the patient who use uh, femoral artery as the site of attack, uh, patient needs to be rest in bed for six to eight hours. And um, uh, for if patient is normal, then they will be discharged on the same day. But if patient is not normal, uh, means that uh, patient needs to go for the ICU for the close monitoring. And for unstable patient, they need to undergo the CABD. CABD means the coronary artery bypass. 
And because of this procedure, you use uh, contrast media. So to extract the contrast media from the body, patient is advised to drink plenty of water to flush out the contrast media from the body. And patient is also uh, being told that the country part will have a slight angle of at a small part. Okay, next we go for the images. Okay, yeah. So this is the anatomy of the part with the left coronary artery and the bifurcation of the left coronary artery. So basically, it bifurcate into the left circumflex artery left marginal artery and also left anterior descending artery of the okay. So for left coronary artery here we have six uh, images, different images to fit uh, for the uh, for the visualization of this image. Okay, first is the LAO powder, left anterior of the powder or also known as a spider view. So this spider view is best to realize the left main and also bifurcation of the LAB and left percussion. Okay, so this is image of the LAO powder. So here you have the image of the spider here, which shows to the LAB and also our left. Next is left uh, LAO frenia, which best to realize the of, of the left uh, marginal artery and also LAB. And epiphrenia, best visualize the osteum of a left marginal artery and also left anterior descending artery. Epipowder, right cranial and uh, right anterior oblique cranial and also right anterior oblique powder. Okay, so for epipowder, it is best visualize the left circumflex artery here. And LAO cranial. So here it is best to realize the osteum of the left uh, marginal artery and also left ascending posterior artery here. And this is epiphrenia and RAO frenia and also the RAO powder. So next is the right coronary artery, RTA, and this is anatomy of the RTA here. So for the RTA, right coronary artery, we have three uh, projections that should be done, which is left anterior oblique, uh, epiphrenia, LAO frenia, and also RAO. So uh, left coronary having more projection needs to be taken as compared to the right coronary artery because of uh, most of the blood supply to the heart needs the left coronary artery. So this is image of the LAO, left, left anterior of this, we show the right coronary artery here. Okay. This is epiphrenia and RAO. So additional, we have the LAO cranial, which is additional here. And then, uh, grading stenosis. So, uh, grading stenosis is used to determine the severity or degree of stenosis uh, or the accumulation of plaque within the blood vessel. Okay, so basically, uh, the this gradient synopsis is comparing the edge, the area of narrowing here with the advanced uh, normal segment, and the presence uh, reduction and accumulation in the projection demonstrate the most severe narrowing. So by comparing the uh, narrowing of the uh, blood so uh, at the plug surface and also the advances, again, turn so we can determine the degree of the stenosis. So the degree of the stenosis is important because it is associated with the stroke, uh, the risk for strokes to happen. So if the degree of the stenosis less than 50% means uh, it is associated with the uh, normal aging, so uh, low risk for the uh, stroke. But if the uh, stenosis is happen more than 70%, means that a uh, patient is uh, having a higher risk, which is around 2 to 4% risk for um, strokes to happen within a year. And also, the more severe one is the total operation means the blood vessel here is already uh, completely uh, blocked by the uh, formation of the blood, the formation of the blood. And then, uh, if a patient is uh, having the uh, plug here, 
and then the plus is more than 70 percent so the balloon or the angel first plastic procedure needs to be done with this uh, the uh, balloon angel plastic so basically the balloon angel plastic means that uh, once there is a formation of the plus within the coronary blood vessel so this balloon will be inserted with the catheter okay, into the area of the plug here and then later on the thermodynamic pressure uh, will be applied okay, here to, uh, uh, to expand the balloon and this balloon will be expand and then it will push the uh, plug and blood vessel away so basically the balloon here will open the narrow blood vessel here so um, the failure of the inflation is monitored by the pressure drop to prevent the vessel rupture and more than one inflation may be required. So the failure given needs to be monitored and uh, the inflation of the balloon uh, needs to be done more than one time so that it really often the occluded blood vessel here. And the image here show how the expansion of balloon and the plastic is done. So here the insertion of the catheter with the balloon and here is the balloon is expanded to open the narrow blood vessel which is the yellow one is the top and this one the blood vessel is already open to the top of the blue. And then uh, next is the stem and the plastic. Okay, so basically after the, op uh, the balloon is already opened the narrow blood vessel so stem is safe to assist in maintaining of the stability of the blood vessel means to secure the pattern of the blood vessel after the uh, narrow blood vessel is opened. So basically, stem is this one. It, it is a kit like method device that is placed within the lumen of the vessel to provide the support. Okay? So basically, there are two parts of the uh, stem. So first is the self expanded, which is to send uh, automatically expand uh, on its own after the salve being removed from the blood vessel. And the second one is the blood, uh, the balloon expandable part, which is that it needs to be expand with the head of the balloon here. And uh, currently, many stand, uh, now this many stand is uh, already implemented with the pharmacology agent or the medication. So basically, this medication is to inhibit the recall of the vascular tissue within the artery and interferes with the process of the stenosis. So basically, um, uh, now the medication within or the pharmacology agent within the stand uh, helps to uh, prevent the stenosis to happen again at the site of the blood accumulation here. And then, uh, Coronary endography is also associated with a few complications and the risk. Okay? Uh, for, for example, the low, uh, the low blood pressure, hematoma, seizure aneurysm, uh, myocardial infarction, cardiac component, dissection of the artery, dissection of the artery, that usually means the tear of the artery, so thrombus and air and the region, arrhythmia, kidney damage due to the use of the sympathetia. Uh, Pain and the bleeding at the frontal side, infection, allergy to contrast media. And this image to show the possible complications and risk of the uh, associated with the coronary infection. So uh, we have come to the end of uh, my sharing today. So I hope uh, my sharing do provide an insight and also information to all of you regarding the coronary and the body. So I think I will pass the session to Miss Moderator, uh, Miss Lee. Uh, um, thank you, Amira. Thank you, Miss Munira, for the wonderful presentation. Okay, um, dear viewers, if you have any question for this topic, please leave a comment. Please fill in the survey form, which can be found at the comment section by the end of the webinar. A certificate will be awarded. Um, when, uh, when uh, you are explaining regarding this uh, coronary angiography, um, how is about the risk of the procedure? Before we go to the question. 
risk of the coronary uh, angiography procedure. All right. Uh, thank you, Major Umi, for the question. It's great to have a question for me. Um, should I send it back the message? All right, so uh, so let's go back a little bit for um, the possible complication at least. So basically, maybe I'll go a little bit after this one. So basically, um, because this procedure involves with the blood, um, we get the blood vessel. So, uh, so one of the possible complications is the blood vessel. means that person is having uh, an abnormal blood vessel due to the uh, infection of uh, the blood vessel in the uh, blood vessel. And hemahoma is the means uh, that the uh, uh, disease and uh, myocardial cardiac component means that the estimation of the blood vessel within the uh, heart tissue so it can be changed the uh, heart uh, of the patient and also among other we have this case means the death of the blood vessel means that uh, the blood cannot be supplied to that region so the at the region is that and also uh, possibly the death but it's also within 1.1 per uh, 10 procedures. Uh, but the possible complication is low, there is a uh, possible complication but the limit of the tendency uh, is low. So did I answer your question? I hope my explanation did answer your uh, question, Miss uh, Lee. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss Munila. We have another question from the audience, uh, from Hanis. Hi, good morning, Miss Munira. Good sharing. May I know what is the cost of conducting coronary angiogram? All right, thank you to Miss Hanis for asking the question. So basically, uh, the cost for conducting coronary angiography is depending on the hospital itself, depending on the cost for each hospital. So different options people will have different costs. But uh, for as I know, uh, for the coronary angiography itself, the cost will be around uh, five thousand uh, ringgit. Okay, as uh, this is uh, for the coronary angiography only for the uh, visualization of the plaque uh, uh, using the blood vessel. But for the treatment, which is for the insertion of the balloon and insertion of the tank. It will cost more than thousand, uh, more than ten thousand ringgit So, and it also the spend also depending on the uh, quality and also the choice of the spend. If you uh, if the patient choose the high quality spend, so means the cost will be higher. Okay? and uh, of course in the private is more uh, expensive as compared to the government, but the cost will be around that. Much. Okay. So, Thank you. I hope uh, Ms. Munira uh, already answered the question. Can we have another question from the viewer? Uh, Petri Zuan, hi Ms. Aisha Munira. What is the percentage of blockage that requires standing? Standing, sorry. All right, thank you. Thank you, Petri, and also Ms. Sorry. So, uh, the percentage of the blockage that requires sensing is around 7%. As I mentioned, uh, if the synopsis is more than 70%, then the patient will go for the synopsis. Um, sorry, the patient will go for the sensing because uh, if the synopsis is more than 17%, means that the patient is ha having higher risk for the stroke. So, stroke will cause the death of the tissue. So, to prevent that, uh, patient needs to go for the sensing. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Munira, uh, for the answering question. Uh, we have another question from the wheel. Hi, Miss. Uh, is there any modality that do the same with coronary angiography? All right. Hi, Desmond. Okay, so uh, throughout the slide, I also mentioned that CPA. Okay, so CPA is uh, another modality that also can produce image of the blood vessel, okay? but uh, this one doesn't. Uh, but this one it use the first copy uh no it use the computed tomography model which is uh produce uh use high radiation but produce the images within a short of time. Okay, thank you, Miss Munira. Hope you uh it will answer your question. 
uh, Desmond. Okay, um, I think there will be no other question. Uh, thank you, Ms. Munira, for joining us today uh, and prov providing us for insightful information. There's a lot of information we got from your presentation. Uh, to our wonderful audience, thank you for joining us at the, this webinar. We look forward for, uh, to you uh, for your comment and participation on future events hosted by Masa University. Please fill in the survey form, which can be found at the comment section by the end of this webinar. It said will be awarded. Okay, in case of any further inquiries, you can contact us through Masa website or visit our social media. Uh, good. Uh, thank you and and good days. Thank you. Thank you.